E... It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we're recording R&B vocals. The mic that I'm using is the Austrian Audio OC818. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone that offers premium sound quality for any instrument or vocals. And today, we're putting it to the ultimate test with a full studio session. It packs some uniquely useful features like built-in low-cut filters, decibel pad for loud instruments, dual capsules and outputs for mono or stereo recording, plus interchangeable polar patterns that can be controlled via Bluetooth with an app but more on that later. Let's get into the settings and switches on this mic. First, I'll set the polar pattern to hypercardioid, which means the mic is sensitive to sound in front of it and rejects sound behind it and around it too. The low cut filter is set to 80 Hertz, which is perfect for female vocals and the decibel pad is off, but maybe if we were recording drums or something really loud, we would turn it on. Here in my audio interface, I've set the input gain to about 35%, enabled 48 volts phantom power, and disabled the low cut in my interface because there's already one going in the mic. Here in my DAW, I have a basic R compressor and FabFilter deesser as a starting point for my vocal chain, plus a stock Ableton reverb to sauce up Kara's headphone mix while she sings. I don't need a surfboard riding on this big horse. Take me up the mountain, yelling from the peak. Now that we have some recordings to hear back, let's expand upon our vocal chain and dial in a more appropriate sound for this track. First, one of my favorite vocal EQs, FabFilter Pro Q3. I want to just control some of the low end a bit more with a low cut and also a low shelf. This is a great way to use subtractive EQ to make the vocal feel brighter by taking away the bass and turning up what's left. Next, I'm going to adjust my R compressor settings to better match the tempo and cadence of this hook with a faster attack and faster release. But we don't need to do crazy compression because we're going to be following it up with parallel compression using the CLA-76 in an audio effect rack so we can blend our wet and dry signal. And of course, if they're singing, you're probably going to want some sort of tuning. So I'm going to be using this UAD Auto-Tune real-time version. It's been discontinued for a long time, but it's still one of my favorites. And in the mix, we're going to swap out this stock Ableton reverb for a plate reverb called EMT250 by UAD. But I always like to apply a little extra de on the input signal just so that the reverb sounds extra dark in Finally, a little echo with quarter note delays, and this chain is sounding great. So let's comp together a perfect lead vocal using the best pieces from all four takes we recorded. Doing this process with a vocal chain in place is just so much easier. Now we're ready to fill in this acapella with doubles and harmonies. This body and this bed and for the week. And baby, we ain't stop until I... These are vocals that I want mixed to be behind my leads and sound a little bit thinner. So to help achieve this from the source, I'm going to increase the low cut from 80 to 160 using the switch on the OC818. And just like that, we're ready to track in some vocal steps. I don't need a surfboard riding on this big horse. me up that mountain yelling from We like to record everything twice and pan them left and right for a larger group vocal effect and maximum width to contrast the mono lead vocals. Once all the doubles and harmonies are recorded, I go through and clean up any empty space, unnecessary breaths, and apply crossfades to make sure it's smooth as possible. Next up, we're recording ad-libs. These are vocals that sit way in the background by themselves behind loads of filter, reverb, and delay effects. I want to capture some of the natural ambiance of the space in the recordings for a less direct sound. 
So let's use the Austrian Audio app to switch to a figure eight polar pattern to blend the sound from both the front capsule and the back capsule of the OCA18. And we're gonna keep this low cut at 160 and probably add even more filtering with plugins after we record our ad libs. Bridge vocals in this song are really special. Kara does a classical opera vocal performance, which gives us a perfect opportunity to test the dual output recording capabilities of the OC818. Simply disconnect your Bluetooth antenna, then plug in the included dual output adapter for a second XLR connection going directly to your interface. Then I have Kara stand extra, extra far away from the mic to get as much room reflection and indirect tone into the recording as possible. Recording in dual output mode truly unlocks the power of the OC818. Because this is where the mic really starts to integrate with the software and bring you features that have never really been seen before in any other microphone. Let's start with the Polar Designer plugin. I'm going to drop it first in my chain before the Autotune, EQ, and Effects. And now this plugin looks like an EQ, but it actually does something way more. First, it divides your signals between one, two, three, all the way up to five bands. And the most unique feature about the Polar Designer is that it lets you choose different polar patterns in different ranges of the spectrum. So for this vocal, I'm gonna try and dial in a cardioid pattern on the low end, cardioid in the high end, and then let's try a figure eight pattern in the mid range. This is gonna give us the most stereo width. Let's go back down. Let's do cardioid facing the opposite way. Let's try pulling the lows and highs down. And you could hear how it totally changes the perspective of the microphone. This is one of the big advantages of using the dual output on the OC818. But technically, if you had any stereo pair of microphones, you could hook them up and use this plugin to make the same kind of adjustments. Extremely useful and honestly game changing if you ask me. And of course, if you want to do EQ and balance adjustments, you can do that down here by changing the dB of each band. Let's say you want less in the lower mids, more in the upper mids. Let's bring back some of those highs that we lost. Boom. Let's flip this to cardioid. Oh, I liked it better back here. contrasts the mono lead vocal so nicely. And of course, if you wanted to sing through this, there's a zero latency mode. And another really unique feature is proximity control. For example, Kara was really far away from the mic when she recorded. So if I push this to the left, that should reintroduce some of the bass back into her voice. And if I push this all the way to the right, it should reintroduce some top end. We definitely got to use this sparingly. And then down below that, we've also recorded some harmonies and layers for the opera layer. And this is a great opportunity to try one of the other plugins that you get here with your OCA18, and that's called Stereo Creator. Let's drop it here on the opera, and let's do our Stereo Creator at the very beginning of the chain. And we're just processing these vocals with it. 
Let's use the dual output of the OC818 to emulate a pseudo stereo configuration or a pseudo mid side configuration, or maybe even swap the left and right channels. Let's do stereo. We could change the pattern. Omnidirectional. Double figure eight. Double cardioid. I like omnidirectional for these harmonies. Another game changer for experimental stereo recording that lets you change your settings in post. So that's Stereo Creator and Polar Designer by Austrian Audio. The rest of these vocals are all tuned and mixed with my favorite plugin chains. Let's take a listen to our finished mix recorded through the OC818. I don't need a about Austrian audio or hear how the OC818 can improve the sound of your studio sessions, visit austrian.audio or check out the links in my description below. And I'll catch you guys next time in another video. Oh yeah, and by the way, this voiceover was also recorded through the OC818.